Welcome to Liberated Stock Trader, learn stock market investing. My name is Barry Moore, Certified Financial Technical Analyst and Founder of LiberatedStockTrader.com. In this episode, I'm going to cover 39 amazing, fully researched and true stock market statistics on size, growth, investor demographics, the best and worst years and the truth behind mutual fund returns. This research is designed to give you an eye-opening perspective on the stock market, its size, who invests in it, and the different markets and vehicles that exist inside it. So first, let's take a look at stock market size. The entire world's stock exchanges have a capitalization of $80 trillion, up from $25 trillion in 2009. That's a 320% increase. The US stock exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ combined make up 39% of the entire global stock market value with a market capitalization of $31 trillion. In fact, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ combined are bigger than the next seven exchanges together, including Japan, China, Euronext, which is the stock exchange group operating across Europe, London, Hong Kong and Canada. So we know now that the two Goliaths in the global stock markets are the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. So we know who the main players are. Let's take a look at the stock market growth. Many people say the stock market is too risky and individual stock ownership is even riskier. Owning an index fund on a major world index, especially in the US, over the long term is proven to yield a good profit. So let's take a look at the returns over the last 20 years. In the last 20 years, from 1998 to 2018, the best performing major index has been the NASDAQ 100, with a meteoric return of 468%. The next best is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or the DJ30, with 191% return. The other exchanges, the major exchanges, lag this. The German DAX, for example, has returned 163%, and the S&P 500 with 158%. The United Kingdom FTSE has managed a dreary 25%, and the Nikkei 225, uh, Japan's major stock exchange, has returned 29% over that last 20 years. So the biggest returns have been with the NASDAQ 100 over the last 20 years. Let's take a look at the next section, which is stock market private retail investors. So in 1998, 60% of US adults were invested in the stock market through mutual funds, retirement plans, or directly. In 2007, the number of invested adults reached a high of 65%. The dot-com crash and the 2008 financial crisis have damaged American adult trust in the markets, and the percentage of adults who invested in 2016 is at a multi-decade low of only 52%. Approximately 33% of US households have taxable investment accounts. This means they are actively investing outside of a taxed exempt vehicle. And it's also estimated that 90% of trade volume in stock trading is robotic. This means quantitative and computer algorithmic trading. 90% of the volume is computerized and robotic. So a, a taxable account is essentially any active mutual fund or passive index tracking fund that resides outside of an IRA or 401k retirement fund. This includes self-directed investors or traders also. So let's take a look at retail investor demographics. So what is the breakdown of the typical investor and are the newest generations of millennials investing? In the US, 21% of women and 24% of men 
have taxable investment accounts. In fact, if you do not have any dependents or any children, you are 3% more likely to invest. When it comes to married couples, we see that 46% of married couples without dependents have taxable investment accounts and 36% of couples with dependents. 20% of single males with or without dependents have investment accounts and 23% of single females without dependents have investment accounts compared to 15% of single females with dependents. Surprisingly, only 22% of millennials have taxable investment accounts compared to Gen Xers who have 29% of them invest and baby boomers at 39%. In fact, the biggest investors are the silent generation. I guess this is the older generation who've had longer to develop their careers, build their wealth, who are investing. And that makes up 53% of the silent generation are investing in the stock market. The biggest factors as to people actively investing are a higher income. So those people who earn more than $50,000 a year, have a college degree, usually tend to have higher levels of financial literacy and higher risk tolerance. Therefore, this is the magic statistic. What was interesting from the studies that have been done are that race differences are insignificant in the demographics of the retail investor. So let's take a look at Wall Street and fund managers. Actively managed funds or mutual funds performance is looked at here. Fund managers seem to be excellent and making profits for themselves, but not profits for their clients. So let's take a look at the percentage of fund managers who fail to beat the market. So this means when they're measured against the underlying index that they're invested in, can they beat the market? So over one year, 60.49% of fund managers failed to beat the market index. And this is the average pretty much every single year. Over any given three year period, the statistic gets much worse. We're talking nearly 93% of fund managers fail to beat the market index. Over 15 years, this figure rests at 82% of fund managers fail to beat the market index. So what happens if you consistently fail to beat the market closure does. So this is a very interesting statistic. And the source is the S&P Standards and Poor's SPIVA report that they do every year or so measuring survivorship of funds. And this is essentially saying that within any 10 year period, 43% of all funds are actually closed down, normally due to lack of performance. So we know that beating the market is difficult. The vast majority of mutual funds do not beat the underlying index and they incur much higher costs than passive index tracking funds. We can assume that at least 2% less compounding of your wealth will occur. Over 50 years, your share of the market's cumulative return will reduce from 100% to a horrific 39% if investing in more expensive non-tax exempt mutual funds low cost index funds expenses typically eat up four percent of your dividend yield actively managed growth funds typically consume 100 percent of your dividend yield with value funds only taking 58 percent some interesting statistics there so let's look at shocks and recessions the fear of the boom and bust is always there for anyone who has money in the market. But overall, for the long-term investor, recessions and crashes can be lived through by staying invested. Let's look at the history. Over the past 100 years, we have had 18 economic recessions. And this averages one every five and a half years. In the last 20 years, from 1998 to 2018, we've had only two recessions. From 2000 to 2002, 
and from 2007 to roughly 2009. Re these recessions have averaged one every 10 years. While the financial crisis in 2008 wiped out 38% of the value in a single year. Comparatively, the Great Depression wiped out 71% over four years. And the 1974 oil shock took out 32% in two years. So that is the brief summary of the recessions, the statistics around recessions. Let's deep dive into the worst and the best years. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Investing in a low cost stock market index tracking fund is simply one of the simplest and low risk ways to expose yourself to the dynamic wealth creation of the US or any other major developed world economies. As only 39% of the world's population is considered free, this limits our choice of safe countries indices to invest in. We're looking at the US, the UK, Europe and Canada are all still solid bets. For this analysis of the best and worst years, we'll look at the S&P 500, the large US bellwether index that provides a solid basis for the analysis. So the worst stock market years over the last 90 years. Coming in at spot number one is 1931, which suffered a 47% loss. That means 47% of the value of the S&P 500 in 1931 was wiped out. Spot number two comes in at 1937 with a double dip against the Great Depression, a 38.59% loss. In third spot, the modern day financial crisis in 2008 claims 38.59% loss. After this, we had 1974 with a 29.7% loss Number five is 1930 with a 28.48% loss. And lastly, good old 2002 with a minus 23.37% loss for that year. But it's not all bad. With the bad also comes the good in the stock market. So let's take a look at the best years. We have, coming off the back of the Great Depression, we have... 1933 with a joyous bounce of nearly 47 percent following 1953's minus 6.62 percent we have 1954 with a 45 percent increase again another great depression rebound rally we have 1935 with a 41.37 percent increase after this the other best years in the stock market have been 1958 with a 38% increase and 1927's pre-depression madness and leverage produced a 37.88% increase. But finally, the Reagan and Thatcher years yielded to Clinton and Blair, which produced 1995's 34.11% jump. In fact, from 1995, to 1999, we had one of the best bull markets ever, yielding an average 26.3% per year for five years. And finally, we'll have a quick look here at compounded returns. And this is the key to long-term wealth creation and investment in the markets. If you had invested $1,000 in the S&P 500 in 1930, it would have yielded $160,000 with compound interest today. As Peter Lynch would say, this would, is a 160 bagger. Don't forget, you can find this article at liberatedstocktrader.com forward slash stock minus market minus statistics. And you'll see all the sources and references from this research there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want a complete stock market investing education, combining fundamental and technical analysis, risk and portfolio management to give you the knowledge to invest with consistency and confidence, check out our pro training with 16 hours of video and the Liberated Stock Trader book. 
go to liberatedstocktrader.com forward slash pro. We also have free investor training at liberatedstocktrader.com forward slash register. And you can register for our podcast at liberatedstocktrader.com forward slash podcast. Thank you for your time and I wish you a great day.